Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems. It's Technical Wednesday. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about why we picked a generation four operating system. So we get questions along the way uh, from customers, you know, comments asking, uh, why no ambidextrous slide release? Uh, or why did you choose the Gen 4 operating system versus the Gen 3 or the Gen 5 or whatever? Uh, there was quite a bit of thought that went into that. So uh, at the time, other frames in the market that were using the Glock operating system, of which there are certainly others, uh, were predominantly Generation 4. With our goal being getting as high as possible on the gun and controlling recoil, it made a lot more sense for us to use a Generation 4 versus a Generation 3, uh, actually Generation 4 or Generation 5. The reason being the Generation 4 and 5 trigger housings have a uh, basically a smaller profile. They have a tighter radius in the back here, which allows you to bring the back strap in uh, a little tighter and essentially lower the gun deeper into your hand. So right off the bat, we knew we wanted to use Generation 4 uh, trigger housing in the gun no matter what we did, okay? Uh, we also liked the Generation 4 and Generation 5 uh, magazine button a lot better. So it's a, it's a larger pad, I think it's a little more refined in its appearance, and of course, as you know, it's also reversible. So if you are a left-handed shooter, you can move the magazine button onto the opposite side of the gun. Uh, that, I think, is really important being able to configure the gun for a left-handed shooter when it comes to a magazine release, I think is really important because unquestionably using your thumb is the fastest way to get the magazine out of the gun and it's the strongest finger on your hand. So um, it made sense to have that. So again, generation four or five was kind of what it was pointing to. Um, after that, it was, okay, well, what are the differences between four and five? Um, one of them is the, is the ambidextrous slide release lever. And that's the main thing I wanted to hit on. So we decided not to do that, okay? Uh, and, and that was, I think, a disappointment to some, but I want to explain the reasons behind that decision uh, because they're, they kind of play into our philosophy. And by the way, this is just our philosophy. Does not mean it's the only way, but this is just the way we think about tactical shooting and reloading and slide release levers. Okay, so, you know, presumably uh, the advantage of a slide release lever here is uh, if I've got a, a magazine, if I've gone to slide lock, let's actually start again. So I've fired my last round, the slide is locked to the rear, and now I'm gonna do my reload. These are dummy rounds. I pick up my magazine and I have a, a little lever I can push on to bring the gun back into battery, right? Uh, yes, you certainly can do that. And in my years as a competitive shooter, shooting 1911s, with great big extended uh, slide release levers on them, I did it quite a bit. However, um, not long after going into the army and going to some more shooting schools and uh, shooting more tactical type pistols that didn't have some of the advantages or you know bigger controls that a custom 1911 would have, uh, I was taught to slingshot. So I was taught that when you're doing a reload, your workspace is kind of back you know in here and that when you do a reload, you insert the magazine and you slingshot the gun instead of using the slide release lever. Why? Well, there's a couple reasons. Um, one of them is, in general, when you're scared, anything that is a gross mo motor movement, a big motor movement, is probably better than something that's a fine motor movement. And so the reality is most slide release levers on pistols of this type, whether they're ambidextrous or not, are pretty small. In fact, having them be bigger would in many ways be a liability because you know the bigger the slide release lever is, the more likely you are to be either holding it down inadvertently so the slide doesn't lock back or pushing it up inadvertently so the slide lock, locks back prematurely. Um, they also tend to stick out from the gun more, uh, maybe snag on equipment or holsters. And so having the slide release lever be big is kind of a liability. And you would really only do that if you were wanting to use that as your means of releasing the slide during a reload. The rest of the time, you know, the slide release lever is just kind of there to help you lock the slide back or to lock the slide back when, when the gun is, is empty. So I was taught to slingshot, insert the magazine, pull and release. Big motor movement, it happens in your workspace. 
you can grab a hold of something that's that's big versus hunting for some small thing on the side of the gun okay um, I have missed a slide release lever before even on guns that have an extended one um, and I by the way I'm not alone in that training so there's a lot of tactical schools that teach it that way and a lot of the folks in our in our company that come from that background were taught to do things that way um, the other argument, and I think this is the one that I like the most, the other argument for doing it that way is you actually get quite a bit more slide travel. So, uh, you know, if you look at where the magazine locks the slide to the rear, um, it's not in its fully maximum rearward most position. You'll see I can push the slide back a little further, quite a bit further, right? That might be half an inch, actually. So having that extra sl uh, slide travel helps ensure that you're gonna get that round up the ramp. So it's just another way to make sure that, especially if the gun is fouled or dirty or whatever, or hangs up on something, it's just another way to make sure that you get the round to slam home. Am I saying that you're not gonna get the, the round to go home if you use a slide release lever? Absolutely not, it will still work. Uh, but again, it's just about maximizing the possibility of success. I also think that, uh, frankly, in watching you know video of me shooting uh, and watching video of other people shooting using that technique you're not really costing yourself much time if any time okay um, you know for a for an elite competitive shooter if they're doing a uh, speed reload where they're not dropping the magazine so they've let's say they've ex I'm sorry where they're not releasing the slide let's say they've expended a partial magazine they dump the partial magazine in the dirt and they load the fresh magazine without having to do anything up here. That's maybe like 1.5, maybe 1.3 if you're you know smoking fast. 1.3 to 1.5. If it's a slide lock reload where you know you're dealing with the gun at slide lock and you're doing the magazine change and you have to do it do a uh, uh, the slide release or to to rack it, you're now in like maybe the 1.6 to 1.8 range, probably closer to 1.8 to two seconds if you got to do this. But I'm not convinced that you know that little bit of time that you're potentially saving by trying to use a slide release lever is necessarily outweighs the certainty of getting a hold of the slide and releasing it and getting the round up the ramp that doing this does. Okay, so so that's kind of where our our decision came from not to do the ambidextrous slide release because it was going to add complexity, it was going to add cost. It was going to kind of reduce the number of aftermarket parts because at the time we were thinking about that, less so now because we've learned that, frankly, when people start messing with guns, it creates problems. So nowadays we really don't recommend aftermarket parts, but if you are a guy who wants to do that, you do have those available to you uh, if we use a Generation 3 and 4 style slide release that's only on one side of the gun. Um, so that's where that came from. So Generation 4, again, was the operating system of choice. We loved the magazine release that could be reversed because that was a critical thing for left-handed shooters. We liked the smaller trigger housing that could allow us to get higher on the gun. But after that, we just decided that we would stick with the single-sided slide release lever for the reasons that I just described. Okay, uh, hope that was helpful. As always, we're here if you need something and we'll see you again next, hopefully Tuesday instead of Wednesday for another discussion about what we do here at Shadow Systems.